So good evening. We are going to start with session number four. Um, for this uh, week number three, we are going to end this week with um, a kind of long uh, topic because we are going to talk about um, like uh, a way in which we can improve some of our skills. In this case, we are going to talk about a reading. So we are going to work with that um, with that topic, and we have some tools that we are going to uh, use to help us to improve that um, a skill that is very, very important that we can develop that, um, that is skills in English because we are learning English, but in that case that we don't like to read, we can apply these kind of tools in which we are uh, going to have, um, like we are going to search for the keywords in our reading or we are going to have the information that we are looking for through this kind of um, uh, tools. So in this case, it says that the learners uh, seems to have a love-hate relationship with reading because I know that it's kind of hard to read like, other people's do because we are different and we have different ways to learn. So in that case, it is normal to have this kind of relationship with reading because um, even the uh, experienced readers have this kind of relationship because we know that in some cases we love to read the things that we want, but in the case that we have like a job, in which we need to read some specific documents or some specific uh, books, we are not going to read it with the same passion as the ones that we choose for us. So I think that uh, people who hate reading struggle with this task. So in the, the case that um, there are a lot of people that say that they hate to read because the reading is boring, or you know, reading is not like something they like to do because there are a lot of words and um, not so much images in which we can focus our attention. But in that case, um, they don't like to spend time reading a document or a book. This, uh, it says that becoming a proficient reader takes a combination of skills. Beyond vision, phonics, spelling, and letter recognition uh, are the visual perceptual skills needed to read fluently. So in this case, we are going to read some information about uh, these kind of uh, skills because it is like um, a mixture of things that we need to recognize about uh, the reading process. So in that case, it is not like we are just going to read because we are going to see through our eyes the things that can call our attention. In this case, we are talking about images, we are talking about colors, we are talking about uh, some specific details that we want to uh, see in a document in which we can focus or pay attention and read the information that we are going to, to learn. So. In this case, we are going to talk about one specific, um, we can say tool that is the scanning. A scanning is like something that we are going to use to search information in a document without uh, reading the whole document. So it says that visual uh, scanning impacts reading in many ways because people who struggle with letters um, reveals uh, people who, who labors with reading and commonly skip words or line of words when reading, because it is normal that we have that kind of troubles when we are reading and we are not focusing on the 
uh, book that we are reading or the document that we are reading. Um, it says that visual scanning allows us to rapidly shift vision between two objects without overshooting as when shifting vision during reading task. In, in the case that we are copying the um, a word in this case, this skill is very necessary because we are going to have just the key points of the document. A skip words or a line of words when reading or repeats lines of text must use finger to keep place when reading or put reading comprehension. Those are like the problems that we can find when we are reading some kind of documents. All of these aspects uh, of reading can be an issue because of a scanning challenge. So we're going to talk about what it's going to happen when we are using this for like something visual because it is like something that we can find attractive. So in this case, I'm going to write some information in the document. So we're going to see. And I'm going to have like this. So what is the topic I am, I was saying that is a scanning. And it says visual scanning is one of several visual perceptual skills. So in this case, we have some information or extra information about this kind of a uh, visual um, skills, because it is not like uh, just we need to read something. It is like we are going to add some more um, components in this kind of uh, reading process. So visual attention. The ability to focus on important Then we have visual discrimination. So, in this case, de lo que estamos hablando básicamente es de la manera en la que nosotros vamos a eh, buscar es, eh, información específica en un documento o en un libro. En este caso, tenemos que eh, son 
habilidades visuales, no solamente es el hecho de leer, sino es el, el, la habilidad visual que vamos a tener para enfocarnos en, en puntos específicos de la lectura. Tenemos en el primero de visual attention, que es la habilidad de enfocarnos en información visual importante y filtrar esa información de la eh, información que no es tan importante. So, in the second one, it's talking about visual discrimination. Vamos a hacer una discriminación visual, que es la habilidad de determinar las diferencias o, o similitudes en objetos basados en el tamaño, en el color y en la forma. Because in that case, it is like we can find some eh, keywords or some specific ideas based on uh, the things that we are seeing in that case. So for this, uh, our, uh, we need to focus on the information that we are looking for because in some cases, if we don't know what we are going to search in a document, it is not like we are going to find the information, but we, if we have like the main ideas of the things that we are going to um, search or we have some questions that we need to answer, we are going to find the information that we are looking for. So, visual memory. It says the ability to recall visual traits of a form of objects. Oh, that's okay, don't worry. So in this case, it's like remembering the things that we have seen. Uh, it will be like very important that we can focus on some specific points and to remember the things that we have seen um, because it will help us to use that information for the things that we are doing. Then visual spatial relationship. And it says that understanding the relationship of objects within the environment. And we have also visual sequential memory. Visual figure ground. And it says that it's the ability I mean the ability to locate something in a basic background.
And then we have two more. That is the visual form constancy. That is the ability to know that a form or shape is the same, even if it has been made smaller, larger, or has been thrown around. And the last one, visual closure. The ability to recognize a form or object when part of the picture is missing. So in this case, what we are talking about is kind of visual um, skills. In this case, um, you know that uh, when we are doing an, an activity, it's not like we are just using one part of it. Uh, we are using a full um, or complete uh, sequence or actions. And in this case, when we are using uh, this kind of uh, skills, that is the, the reading, we are not all uh, just seeing words. We are going to see a lot of uh, objects images and so on. So in that case, we are using um, different kind of skills eh, to complete an action. Estamos hablando de eh, leer, estamos hablando de eh, mejorar lo que es la lectura, pero en este caso la lectura no, no viene sola, no es como que simplemente vamos a leer y ya está sino que hay muchas cosas más que están involucradas con el hecho de la lectura. Um, y tenemos muchos eh, ejemplos en this case, that visual scanning is one of several visual skills. Tenemos todas estas visual skills eh, que nos van a ayudar también a nosotros a entender lo que estamos viendo. We have visual attention, we have visual discrimination, visual memory, visual spatial relationship, uh, we have visual sequential memory, uh, visual figure ground, visual from uh, form constancy and visual closure. So in that case, it's not like we are just having one specific skill for reading. So all of these areas combined make up visual perception and it's part of the bigger picture of how our, um, how our eyes work functionally. So the visual perception is the ability to organize and interpret the information that is seen and give it meaning. This is a common thread in therapy treatment and is the foundation for many activities that we can use to uh, help people to kind of enjoy the a reading process. So visual perception is essential for reading, writing, math, uh, self-care tasks, instrumental activities, or daily living and play. So it says that it's necessary to have 
these skills because uh, we can do a lot of things thanks to that visual uh, skills. So in the visual perception, it's like we are going to use it for uh, reading, for writing, for math, uh, for self-care tasks, for instrumental activities of daily living and play. So the important points that we are going to develop right now are the how to develop a scanning skill for reading because that is the topic that we are going to see. So in this case, we are going to see how we can do to develop a scanning skills for reading. In this case, it's not talking about that we are going to improve. In this case, we are talking that we need to develop this skill that will help us to uh, read better and have all the information that we need about a document or about a book or about something that we are reading. So in this case, it's to develop, not to improve. So it says there are ways to support development and accuracy of visual scanning skills. In este caso, vamos a hablar de cómo podemos nosotros eh, desarrollar este, esta habilidad. Podemos llamarla de esa manera, que es el scanning, eh, cuando estamos leyendo. So we are going to see number one. And it says reading, read, reading this. And it says, the, it's like an example. When my girls were gone, the summer reading list meant a change to earn a ticket to Six Flags. It meant that the, the park uh, from the school. It also meant a dollar per chapter book for mom and dad. I was out $61 just from one kid that summer it was worth it. In preparation, we did a lot of scanning activities for reading readiness. This includes worksheets, uh, like um, examples, uh, games that they can use. Um, they have like visual perceptual games that they can use to help the girls to uh, scanning or make that kind of activities. Um, and it's in this, it says that this might include using reading prompts, desired books, and short reading passage. It is necessary that we can add this kind of activities to um, our daily life, because in that case, we are going to improve and develop this kind of activities. Other strategies include working on scanning the environmental for details, the environment for details. Um, as people look for items that are all one color. In that case, it's like making a relationship between the things that we are going to read with some things that we can find in the environment. Then we have visual in this game. Um, in this case, we have number two. That is visual scanning games. Maybe we can think why we are talking about games. In that case, we are talking that um, we are adults. It's something that we cannot change but uh, we can use this kind of activities to first relax our mind and also uh, make easier to understand what we are reading. So in this case, um, it says that some activities to develop a scanning skill when reading include tricky fingers, uh, where it's Waldo, it is like, a map in which you need to find uh, a guide with a, a specific outfit. 
uh, highlight magazines and spotted games. So in that case, it's like to focus on one specific thing. Um, sabemos que eh, la lectura es algo que empieza desde pequeños, pero que no siempre nos acostumbramos a eh, hacer esta actividad, porque para nosotros puede ser un poco eh, tediosa o cansada, ¿verdad? Según el nivel de trabajo que tengamos. Pero dice que para poder desarrollar estos eh, skills, esta, esta habilidad, podemos buscar eh, juegos que incluyen este visual scanning, que nos va a ayudar también a mejorar, ¿verdad? Esa parte de nuestro cerebro, ¿verdad? O de nuestras habilidades. Y podemos llegar a pensar que ya no estamos en, en ese momento, ¿verdad? De la vida en el que vamos a jugar. Pero siempre es necesario que nosotros nos relajemos de vez en cuando y también aprendamos cosas nuevas. Then we have vision activities or yes, vision activities. And it says that um, in this case, it's like, We have a skills for underlying ideas in the text that has an impact of reading and learning. Um, so in that case, we are going to see an example for visual scanning activities. So in this case, we have like some uh, activities Uh, I think I will send to you these examples of activities that we can use because it's talking about the visual scanning that is an essential part of, uh, of so many functional skills. And it says that when you are reading a line of text in a book, you shift your eyes left to right across the page without losing your place. When you get to the end of the line, you shift your eyes down to the next line without jumping your vision all over the page. Without this ability, reading will be quite difficult. Read more. Um, so in that case, when we are reading and we are not like very, very experts reading, uh, we can have this kind of, of a slow reading a process in which we are reading word by word, line by line. And in this case, the scanning is that kind of activity in which you are not going to read that slow. In that case, you are going to jump into lines, searching for the information that um, you need to read. Sabemos que cuando no somos expertos leyendo, eh, tendemos a, a, a leer palabra por palabra, frase por frase, para poder entender lo que estamos leyendo. Porque en algunos casos, cuando comenzamos a leer, eh, nos distraemos o seguimos leyendo en automático y no prestamos la debida atención a lo que estamos leyendo y decimos, oh my God, I was reading something, but I didn't understand anything. Because I was like in my mind uh, flying. So in that case, it's kind of hard to understand that what we are like reading. So for that reason, uh, we need to uh, develop this kind of uh, skills for the visual scanning. But let me see, I will find something to give a more specific example for you because it can kind of be like hard to understand that the specific or the importance of scanning. So let's see, we have like, different kind of uh, abilities that we can uh, develop like we are reading. And in this case, we have uh, skimming and scanning that are abilities that we need to, to uh, develop to help us to read better. 
And it says that skimming and scanning are reading techniques. So we can call it techniques that use rapid eye movement and keywords to move quickly through text for a slightly different purposes. A skimming is reading rapidly in order to get a general overview of the material. A scanning is reading rapidly in order to find a specific facts. So tenemos eh, esas técnicas and we are going to write some information aquí. Techniques, vamos a escribir techniques and we, will, are, we are going to talk about skimming and scanning a little bit. So, tenemos técnicas para poder leer de manera más efectiva o más rápida sin necesidad de leer todos los elementos que tenemos nosotros en el documento o en el libro. Es para encontrar mucho más rápido las ideas que estamos buscando. So, in this case, we have skimming and scanning. Scanning that was the one that we were learning uh, first. And now we are going to have like a combination of this uh, two. And it says that So in this case, it says that we need rapid eye movement and keywords. The keywords are the important ideas that we are going to focus. Um, if we have the keywords, we are going to find the information. For example, when we are reading like for an exam uh, and we have a text that is talking about um, plants, for example, plants and flowers. And we have some questions that we are going to answer. So maybe the, the questions can be like, what kind of flowers are mentioned in the text, for example? And we have like a really long text in which we need to find that information to answer that question. So in that case, we are going to have the keywords, flowers. And we are going to search for the word flowers, and then we are going to find the passage in which we are going to find the information for flowers. Uh, and then we are going to read that specific uh, line, and we are going to find the answer um, in a really easy way. Um, es bien común cuando tenemos exámenes o actividades donde tenemos que leer textos bastante largos. Um, si vamos a, a leer un texto y contestar preguntas sobre ese texto, and in this case, it, it is not like just in English, but we can use it in, in Spanish also. Eh, tenemos el texto y tenemos diferentes preguntas eh, sobre ese texto. En el caso de que tengamos preguntas específicas sobre el texto, en este caso estamos hablando de plants and flowers, y tenemos nuestra pregunta que nos eh, dice qué tipo de flores son mencionadas en el texto, like that. ¿Qué vamos a hacer nosotros para encontrar esa información? ¿Leer todo el texto de pie a cabeza o de cabeza a pie, como se dice? No, we are not going to do it like that. We are going just to search keywords. Solo vamos a buscar las palabras claves. Nuestra palabra clave es flor. Cuando encontremos um, those words, cuando ya encontremos la palabra flores, we are going to read the whole uh, sentence. And then we are going to find the answer. And in that case, we are not going to read the whole uh, paragraph or the whole document to find the information that we are looking for.
So it says that um, it has like kind of different purposes, but we can apply it to the reading process. And we say that a scheming is a reading rapidly in order to get a general overview of the material. And it says that a scanning is reading rapidly in order to find a specific facts. So in this case, we have here this one that is uh, reading rapidly in order to uh, find a specific facts. In this case, we are talking that we are going to look for um, dates, names, um, activities, um, actions, uh, results, mm, and that is specific a kind of things. So in that case, we are going to uh, read to find um, a specific fact. Entonces, decimos que el skimming es como una lectura rápida de el texto que nosotros tenemos o del material que nosotros tenemos para hacernos una idea general de eso. It's like reading the first page of a book or reading at the general ideas. But in the case of the scanning is to find a specific uh, information that we are uh, looking for or that we need to know. So they are kind of different because in the first one is like making um, a general idea of the topic and the other one is just to search for a specific facts. While well, scheming tells you what general information is within a section, a scanning helps you locate a particular fact. So we have a big difference between them. The one is it telling you general information. And the second one is helping you to locate a particular fact. A scheming is like snorkeling and a scanning is more like pearl diving. Use a scheming in previewing, that is a reading before, um, uh, before you read, reviewing, reading after you read, determining the main idea for a long section you don't wish to read, or when trying to find source material for a research paper. So in that case, it's saying that, that we are going to look um, or to make a preview with a scheming. It's like I'm going to make or tell me, Henry. Hello. I don't know if you are. Uh, Hello, teacher. Hello. Este, I want you to get now that I am a Salvadoran writer. Here. I want to you to know that I am a Salvadoran writer. Adhere in that I am wider a literary world and form 
and from my point of view, it will be an ability to react. I love you, Wardy. I don't know if I am hundred percent clear with this kind of troubles to understand all the things that you are saying because in some points your audio is like not functioning if you can write the things that you want to say i will read and help you with that tell me dennis hi teacher hello uh, what is the tradition in Spanish, Jimmy? Tradition. Okay, yes. Tradition in what? In Spanish. What is the meaning in Spanish? The, the meaning of tradition. Tradition. What is the meaning in Spanish, tradition, Jimmy? Mm, I mean, I don't know if I am having troubles, but can you please write the things that you are going to say because I cannot understand. Si me pueden escribir en el chat, porque no sé si es por el internet o por el audio, pero no los estoy escuchando claramente. Uh, what is the tradition to skimming in Spanish? I mean, I, I heard you that you are asking about tradition, but the next thing, uh, let me see. Ah, I think there are like troubles, but you are talking about tradition, about what? Teacher, tell me. Eh, él pregunta por la traducción, o sea, ¿qué significa en español skimming y scanning? Oh, I, I was listening another thing. <laughs> eh, por eso le digo, no sé si es problema de mi conexión o algo por el estilo, porque yo escuchaba tradition, no translation. But thank you for telling me that they are talking about the translation or the or the meaning of the words. Si estamos hablando de la traducción de las palabras, eh, en skimming podemos decir que es dar una ojeada, like hacer una, un, un, cuando leemos rápidamente algo, pero es como hacer una ojeada. Y en el caso de scanning, como es hacer como un scanner, es dar una vista rápida en in, in that case. Son eh, palabras que se utilizan más que todo en inglés como una combinación eh, para este tipo de acciones. So, in that case, eh, el, el scanning es como una exploración. Es explorar el texto para poder encontrar la información. Y el skimming es como dar una ojeada rápida, o sea, una lectura rápida al texto para entender de qué trata. Ese es el, esa es el, la interpretación o el, el significado que le podemos dar a skimming y scanning. Skimming, una ojeada rápida. Scanning, una exploración del texto. And I am so sorry because I was not listening very clear the, the question. So, uh, I would say in that, uh, in this case, use the skimming in previewing or, as, or making a preview. Cuando hacemos skimming y hacemos el preview, es como ver o analizar eh, sin necesidad de leer. Hacemos como la introducción, la entrada al tema. In that case, is when we are, uh, for example, we have a text in which we are talking about uh, food. And we see something about food, but we are not reading the whole text. We are just creating an idea about the text that we are going to uh, read. For example, if we are talking about food, we know that we are going to find 
uh, recipes um, that we are going to find uh, how to create some cakes, for example, or something like that. In that case, it is not necessary to read, to read the whole document to have an idea about the things that we are going to read. And then it says that use scanning in research to find particular facts, to study fact heavy topics, and to answer the question require factual support. Cuando usamos scanning, eh, let me see. Um, sí, es como hacer un resumen. Podríamos decir que es como hacer un resumen eh, de lo que vamos a leer. Es como, se han fijado en la, en la, cuando vemos un libro, hay como en la parte de atrás, nos da una, una breve explicación de qué va a tratar la historia. No hemos leído el libro, pero tenemos esa parte. But I don't have como, to like... como, como un argumento. Yes, es como un argumento. But I don't have like a book here. For example, I have this one. It's a word search uh, puzzles. In this case, you have this kind of uh, books. In this case, you have the image. Tienen la imagen y ustedes saben de lo que trata. But if you go to the, the end, you are going to find this information about this kind of book that you are going to have. And it's like an explanation of the things that you are going to find uh, in the book. So in that case, it's when you are going to have that kind of um, documents or text, you are just going to have like an idea, a general idea about the text. Es como hacer ese tipo de, eh, digamos, ustedes tienen un documento de unas dos páginas, you have two page, and in which you are going to find some information and to create that um, idea. For example, I send you um, a link and you are going to read something about English, the English learning process. And I will ask you, um, what is that uh, information about? And you are going to tell me, ah, and give some points. In ese caso, cuando vamos a hacer el skimming, yo les voy a mandar una, un documento o les voy a mandar un enlace donde van a encontrar información. La van a leer pero no van a analizar ustedes todo lo que viene en el texto, sino que ustedes van a hacer una lectura rápida y van a, a decir, ah, ya sé de qué trata esto, trata de esto, esto y esto. Y a la hora de preguntar, ustedes van a hacer su pequeño resumen de lo que leyeron. O sea, no es necesario que encuentren todo lo que hay ahí dentro del de texto. En cambio, con el scanning es no leer básicamente todo lo que está ahí, sino irse directamente al punto que necesitan. Por eso dice, um, to find particular facts, to study fact heavy topics, and to answer question require factual support. Es para responder preguntas con datos que están inmersos dentro del documento o de lo que estamos leyendo. Eh, datos importantes como nombres, fechas, eh, actividades, eh, cosas que pasaron. Para eso se usa el scanning, para no leer todo, sino buscar nada más el punto necesario. Por eso se dice las keywords, porque con las keywords yo ya tengo qué es lo que voy a buscar. Um, maybe I can eh, create a list of words that I need to search in the uh, document. Uh, for example, I need cakes, I need sugar, I need to read about um, decoration, I need to read about colors. I have four words and I need to search for that four words to find the sentence in which the um, text is talking about that keywords. And it says skimming will help you to save time. A skimming can save you hours of laborious reading. However, it is not always the most appropriate way to read. 
It is very useful as a preview to a more detailed reading or when re um, reviewing a selection heavy in content. But when you scheme, you may miss important points or overlook the finer shadings of meaning, for which rapid reading or perhaps even studied reading may be necessary. In this case, it's like we can do this scheming, but in some cases, um, you will find some things that are hard to understand because you are not reading the whole thing. So it's good when we are going to read the, the whole document later. But if you are going to uh, just do this scheming and maybe you are not going to find all the elements that you are going to um, say about the text. Use a scheming to overview your textbook chapters or to review for a test. Use a scheming to decide if you need to read something at all. For example, when you are searching some information about something that you are doing and you need a document that helps you to uh, give more information or more details about the thing that you are doing. You need to do this scheming because you are going to see if you need a, that document for helping you with the things that you are doing. It is, if this document doesn't have any um, information that you need for your work, you are not going to use it. But you need to do like an scheming to understand that the topic uh, that you are looking for is in that text. Utilizamos el skimming para determinar si un documento es necesario para nosotros. Si ustedes están haciendo un trabajo y tienen un tema en específico y necesitan más información sobre ese tema, van a utilizar el skimming porque van a estar buscando eh, diferentes documentos, ya sea en internet o físicos, y van a hacer... Eh, esa, ese ojeo rápido, esa lectura rápida para determinar si ese texto les va a servir o no les va a servir. Porque si se sale del tema que ustedes tienen, pues no les va a servir. Pero si está dentro de lo que ustedes necesitan, pues les va a servir mucho ese documento. Then, skimming can tell you enough about the general idea and tone of the material, as well as its gross similarity of difference from other sources to know if you need to read it at all. The scheme prepares yourself to move rapidly through the pages. You will not read every word. You will pay special attention to typographical um, cues, headings, boldface, and italic type. Identifying bullets and numbered lists. You will be able to for keywords and phrases, the name of people and places, they nouns, and unfamiliar words in general. So for this skimming process, you need to read the uh, headlines, uh, words that are marked in the document. ¿Cómo podemos hacer el skimming? Um, vamos a leer los encabezados, que, que es donde nos da a veces a nosotros Um, la información que vamos a necesitar. Uh, si en el encabezado está el nombre de algo que necesitamos, lo vamos a tomar. Vamos a buscar también uh, palabras que estén en negrita, o sea, marcadas, uh, palabras que estén subrayadas, uh, listas, números, fechas, nombres, cosas que no nos sepamos. Ahí es donde vamos a buscar. Entonces, eh, vamos a hacer como una vista rápida de todo para encontrar esos puntos específicos. And it says that in general, we need to follow eh, these steps. So I'm going to write the eh, steps that we need for a scheming. And we have number one, read the table of contents. For a chapter overview. So it's 
um, we can understand that in this case that we are going to read the type the table of contents because we are going to find if, if we can see the topic that we are looking for. Number two, glance through the main head headings in each chapter just to see a word or two. Glance through the main headings in each chapter. Just to see a word or two. And it says that the headings of charts and tables. If we have charts and tables in the document, we are going to read the headings because we are going to know uh, what is the information that uh, they have and if it is uh, necessary for our uh, document or information that we are going to uh, search. In this case, I have this, uh, word, this book of word search and if I want to search for the information, I'm going to uh, look for these ones, uh, the headings. And I said public speaking, because if this is the topic that I need, I will uh, look for these kind of headings in which we are going to find the information that I am looking for. Then we have that we need to read the entire introductory paragraph. So we are going to read the introductory paragraph and then the first and last sentence only of each following paragraph. Eh, vamos a leer la, el, el párrafo de introducción para entender más o menos de qué trata el tema. Solo el párrafo de introducción lo vamos a leer completo. Luego los siguientes párrafos que le siguen vamos a leer solo la primera y la última eh, oración. Porque a veces en esas, eh, en esas oraciones es que nos dan más información sobre lo que estamos buscando. Así que no va a ser necesario que leamos todo el párrafo, sino solo el párrafo de introducción. First and last sentence of the following, um, the following paragraph. So it is not necessary to read the whole document. So now it's time to end this session. And we are going to see each other on Monday. That is the, um, the beginning of the last week of this uh, course. So we are going to see each other the next week. Have a good night and have a really good eve um, weekend. I mean, we are going to have a really good weekend. So we are going to see each other on Monday. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Yes.